The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Well, hello and good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, September 28th, 2023. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, the boss, Otis Wiley. You guys, look, Choo Choo still not here. We got it. He's serious. He's on a strike. It's not necessarily a hunger strike, clearly, but it is a strike nonetheless. He ain't here. Got to get those subscribers up. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button if you are following and get into that live chat where all the party is at because that's that's what we all should be doing. Pancakes dropping left and right. It's awesome. Look, if this is not your, if this is your first time to the show, we want to welcome you. If this is not, we want to thank you. Look, Otis, we've had a lot of things going on this week. You know, I know you were just leaving over from a, a women's golf game today. Oh, no, I'm sorry, women's soccer. Not soccer. Golf. You just – yeah, we had we had a coach on last – a couple days ago. How was yeah. that? Oh, man, listen, I, in the midst of the first period, before even halftime, it was 3-0. Uh, the girls are on attack, man. It's – they are – they got the mentality, mentality that – I wish some of our guys had on Saturday sometimes where they are just at first maybe 10, 15 minutes. Maryland didn't even go to the other other side, man. It was just attack, attack. So good to see uh, see them in 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 full stride there. But it looks like it's going to be a, a long night for the Maryland Terrapins because uh, women's soccer is uh, pouncing right now. Oh, love that! So you're saying they're not a, they're not even crossing the fifty? Man, they're not even crossing the midfield, midfield, oh, midfield. midfield, midfield. Not even, they're not even crossing it, man. They're very, very, very rare that they've been on that side. So um, you were honored today, you know, MJ. You know, she honored yeah. you. Staff faculty uh, appreciation night. So our intern coordinator MJ Andrus, who has uh, spent uh, the entire year working with Playfly at MSU Sports Properties, uh, you know, nominated me as uh, honor. Uh, my our, myself, but obviously giving her an opportunity to work in this industry, and um, she's on a big and big bigger things as she's going to be um, done this December, but also be serving our our president of, of Playfly Sports as an executive admin. So uh, she's kind of growing growing up, man. So it's good to to see see her in action and you know on the better things, you know helping Spartans out. Well, so you're telling us you tell me she's going to be our boss in a minute here, like I mean, listen, I mean come on, man. The way the way, the way MJ the way MJ works, man, yeah, she she's persistent, man, and, and she knows what she she needs to do. So, uh, I, I I didn't have no no hand in that. She came with with the uh, the full skill set, so just giving her some some direction. But she's going to be be great in a, in the corporate America world there. Uh, love it, love to hear that. You know, always want to see Spartans doing good things all over the world, and on that field too. So good luck to the rest for the rest of the game for the women's soccer team as they uh, face and hopefully beat Maryland tonight. Mel Tucker officially fired by Michigan state a day ago. This is the news. We want to talk about it just to clear the air here. Yeah. I was reading some things are like, man, like somebody said, how many times can, can you let somebody go? Uh, I feel like it's been multiple times, but officially it's, it's the news has been, been hit. Uh, with the stamp of uh, he's no longer our coach. But, you know, I feel like there's an element of, you know, one, I'm, I'm a firm believer that those without sin cast the first stone, right? Like, I feel like there's an element of of still showing the support because when we were 11-2, uh, we were all behind him, right? And it's an element of, you know, he, he fell a little bit. And, you know, I feel like it's an opportunity to, to kind of clean the slate and, and get our program – kind of back to where it needs to be. But um, I, I, my heart goes out to those guys because I know exactly how it feels, man. When, you know, you get a coach that gets fired, you know, at least I was in season and he still had 
a game to coach, but um, just the fear of unknown, you know, that's when anxiety kind of tries to creeps in and the fear of unknown people looking at what's this for my future. So I just praying for those guys in the locker room, man. And, uh, and our coaches too, where, you know, it's really hard. It's easy for us outside looking in to say rally, rally together and, and, and look beyond it, but they've been in the, the thick of this fear of unknown for, you know, the past month now where, you know, these, these issues still are going to be coming up. It's not done yet, but uh, I think now it's, we know exactly what the verdict is, right? So um, what do we do next? That's kind of what we're here for to, to, to kind of figure out research and give you the news. But right now we need a, we need a rally and, and our guys, we got a game tomorrow uh, on Saturday. So we got to go and turn our attention to helping these guys and supporting them near and far. You're absolutely right. You know, we have to support the team, have to support the, the coaches who are on staff right now. I mean, I think that they're doing a, a valiant job with, from a leadership position when you look at what they were able to do a week ago. You saw, we talked about this before, the way that the team played, you didn't see a lot of quit. You knew, I didn't see any quit in the team. You know, obviously there was plays left on the field that could have, you know, resulted in points. But looking at this team in practice for two days, I mean, the big days of practice, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when they get the majority of the hitting and, you know, game plan gets installed. Otis, I, I can tell you, man, like you, we talked about this off the air. They look good. The players on the team are focused. I mean, they I, I look, I'm, I'm highly aware and looking for the woe is me, the poor me's. You know how that is, right? I mean, like, oh, man, you know, it didn't see it. I saw players out there. Folks and coaches coaching and coaching them up and, and guys move running from inside the weave, the, the indoor facility, the outside and, and crossing. I mean, they had a lot of noise out there because this is the first road game. And from what I've been able to gather inside that locker room, there's not a lot. I mean, we were afraid of this triggering a massive exodus and guys worrying about their eligibility and all that because of what the NCAA rules allow. But it seems that the team is starting to like look at themselves and say, hey, we got a ball. This is a big game. This is an NBC game, you know, Peacock, whatever it is, uh, 7.30 kickoff Eastern time on the road against a team that was ranked a week ago, Iowa. That's a big matchup. People like to see. I mean, look, as a fan, removing my Spartan dogness for a second, I'm tuning into this game. Because, you know, you know what I'm saying? This is one of those games where you oh, man, this is going to be some hitting, some, you know, like a, a lot of a lot of big plays when you look at what these two programs have been known to do in the past historically. Otis, and when you look at Iowa, and we're going to break that down in a minute, and Michigan State playing against each other at night, I mean, big things can happen. I mean, you've seen excellent games, Iowa, Ohio State, Michigan State against Ohio State, those kinds of games. This is one of those classic matchups, right? Oh man, this is a this is gonna be a slugfest, like full out brawl. And we always, when well, let's 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 put our our Spartan dog former player hat on. This exactly. matchup, this matchup has always been, like I said, something that we go we look forward to knowing this is gonna be your backyard brawl. Like this is mano a mano inside run, mostly 85, 90 percent of the time because. It's like who can establish the run game, which we'll we'll break it down. But uh, the atmosphere there, like Kinnick Stadium, is a is a there's like a twelfth man there too. Where this is this is an element of some of these guys are going to be the first time on the road playing um, against an opponent, you know, outside of East Lansing, and it's very rare to play all of our home games first four in East Lansing, and so kind of get a break from the noise. Locally, let's go across the, the border here on you know, Iowa, state of Iowa, and let's let's see what we can do and bring some some pound, green pound along the way. Yeah, you know, Iowa, a team that we don't get to play every single year. They're on the rotation, but it's every four to five years you get to play Iowa, and it's usually, you know, home, and then a few years later, then you get to go away. Um, birthplace of our own George Blaha, by the way, Iowa. He's going to be there, you know, doing wonder some why he's, No wonder why he's driving there, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know George don't like to drive. But, like, look, <laughs> this is going down memory lane for him because, you know, you don't know how many chances you get to go back to Iowa, you know, as a broadcaster for this type of thing. So it's a special place for everybody to go and, and see and, and something that 
you know, I think the players have a chance to make a memorable experience, especially they can pull off that W. And we're going to break that down in a minute. Absolutely. Getting into the recruiting, Otis. Nick Marsh. Oh. Got to talk about recruits. Everybody wants to talk about recruits. Nick Marsh, the Michigan State commit, wide receiver out of River Rouge, is going to Colorado on a visit while as they play USC. Yeah, man. Uh, you clearly can't fault them, clearly, of what is happening here. Uh, but it also can turn in our favor of, like, hey, man, Nick, we we, we, we need you, man. <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, but, you know, you got to look at it, man, where, you know, what D and Prime is doing there um, is the hottest ticket in, in college football right now. We, we talked about this offline of, you know, to even fly in there now, that that, that price is definitely skyrocketed. Um, and, you know, they're hosting the Trojans, the USC, uh, which, you know, that's a powerhouse, man. You're playing a Heisman Trophy winner in, uh, in, in uh, Caleb uh, Williams. And so I don't know, man. I mean, it's prime time, but, I, I mean, that outcome where, you know, Nick Marsh is going to look at it and see, hey, you know, he's going to be able to play with uh, Shador uh, next year if he, he stays. Uh, but there's an element of it, man, where, yeah, you got to go where you feel like uh, you got the best opportunity. But I hope he still has his heart, which I think his heart's still with us, but you just got to figure out, like, we got to make some decisions quick on who the next person will be who leading our program because this is a main, main target for us, uh, for our program for the future. Yeah, and look, I, I don't I don't fault the guy for going and taking a look. You know, he's committed to Michigan State still. He's not decommitted. Let's be clear about that. But he's going to go take a look at Colorado. I mean, who who wouldn't take a look at Colorado right now, especially with all for all the reasons you just said? I mean, it's it's one of the hottest tickets in entertainment. Period. Right now, uh, when you look at the prime, the Dion prime time effect, you know, you also have a Heisman Trophy winner there. I might just want to, want to go check out a game up close. You know, I mean, look, it, look, it, it is a a spectacle, a spectacular event. Let's say it that way. So. Go ahead, do your thing, Nick. But we're always here for you. Don't forget that. Um, you know, them jersey sales are gonna go through the roof when you come to Michigan State. Don't forget that. Man, grandmama, grandmama Tron and Mama Tron are gonna be able to see you all the time in East Lansing, you know. But that's just I don't know. I know you know that, but we just had to holler at you and tell you that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the Breslin Center opens a sensory space, Otis, for children with autism. Yes, man. If you know the story of Anthony Ayani, um, he's obviously the son of uh, Greg Ayani, who served Michigan State for a long time as our deputy AD uh, in athletic administration. Um, and so uh, I've known uh, Anthony um, a while now, man. I remember him, you know, playing first first year at Grand Valley and then, you know, transfer, transferring over to uh, play for the green and white um, under Coach Izzo. And so um, you know, Anthony is by record the first player in college basketball um, to play, obviously, with autism, uh, having autism. And so this is a huge, huge stride and testament to having this inside of Breslin Center um, that allows students and kids that come to Breslin to watch that has a space for them. Um, and so this is one thing we're trying to get him on the show to, to have an interview to just break it down of all the work that had to go to get this done. And so this is a huge, uh, huge win for the university, but also Michigan State Athletics and having this opportunity to have this sensory room in the Breslin Center. Hey, you can't wait for it. That'll be great to have that, you know, just be all inclusive. I remember when, Absolutely. Uh, you know, AP writer Eric, Larry Lage was talking about getting, you know, sign language stuff in stadiums because his, both of his parents were deaf. Um, this is another step in the right direction, in my opinion, for people with autism and Furthermore, you got to be all inclusive when it comes to this great era of college athletics, you know, with with student athletes. Um, it's a great thing. It's an awesome thing. Moving on to professional sports, when you look at K-9, NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Hey, man, this guy is uh, he's putting it on for uh, the green and white, man. You know, it's always great to see what you did here and then taking that to the next level. And it's, you know, paying dividends of what he put uh, on the record here for Michigan State. And so, uh, one, you know, he beat, he beat my lines clearly, which is uh, all right. Okay. But uh, 
you know, now I know that uh, we got another one in Jaden Ream playing against our Lions tonight right now as we're, 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 we're on the show. Uh, but great, great, great. This, this Like Steve Smith, that boy good. Like that, that boy is, that boy good. He is north, that good. south, like north, south and strong. Like, you know, usually, you know, you got running backs, you know, rookies that come in and, you know, that physicality, that, that different level of talent, you know, you got nothing but beast up there and, you know, he has truly accepted it, embraced it. And uh, it's almost almost like the game's slowed down for him because he kind of is ready and prepared for it. So that's shout out to Coach Reed, obviously, who had him here and and, and put that body of work and got him him right for for this next level. So we got great coaches here still on the staff, man, that, you know, put him up there. So uh, congratulations. Okay, now congratulations, my brother. I can't, can't, can't not say enough congratulatory messages for Kenneth Walker III and what he's been able to do week after week after week. You know, this is a guy got snubbed for the Heisman Trophy ceremony. You know, we, we knew he should have been. But that obviously this is a, a, a lesson to youngsters that are out there. Don't let what happened in the past affect what's going on right now. And Absolutely. this is a guy who puts in the work every single day. I, I, I've not seen a Michigan State player suit up and practice the way that Kenneth Walker III practiced every single day. And you can tell that is carrying over into the NFL. 18 carries, 97 yards, just two touchdowns in back-to-back weeks. I mean, he's a stud and, and proud to be able to say that he was smart, man. You know, really proud. Absolutely. You know, hats off to UK9. And look, don't forget for everyone that's out there to hit that like and subscribe button right now. Do that. We know the Lions are playing right now. We're going to get you to the game in a minute. But look, before we get to the breakdown of Iowa, check out this message from our friends over at IHOP and SeatGeek. Introducing IHOP's new menu with perfectly crispy yet fluffy waffles, warm, flaky buttermilk biscuits, juicy, satisfying steak burgers, decadent eggs, Benedicts, and more. It's time to find your new favorite. Don't worry, we won't tell the pancakes. Only at IHOP. Let's put a smile on your plate. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so we can focus on what he does best, smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Well, oh, look, man. We're going to break down the MSU and Iowa preview, and we're going to start off with the main financial. Stat breakdown. Main Financial, Smart Nation's main partner in retirement. Maximize your wealth and minimize your worry. Call 248-347-MAIN, www.mainfinancialgroup.com. Jordan and everybody over at Main Financial is looking to take care of you. Absolutely. Oh, oh man. Yeah, can't wait. To, he's going to be on the – we're going to have him on next week, by the way. On Thursday, I think that's what it is, right? Thursday, we're going to have Jordan Main make his This is Part of MSU debut. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but for now, look, keys to the game, obviously, players to watch for Iowa. You know, from the offensive side of the ball, we want to look at Cade McNamara, the transfer quarterback from the University of Michigan. Otis, this is a guy whose season stats, you see it right there, 43 for 85. That's 51% completion percentage. 459 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions. Yeah, man. Cade, Cade uh, is obviously a, a well-seasoned vet, so he's he's experienced us, obviously, up close and, and personal. And so uh, preparing for us, knowing that, uh, like you said, we're going to give all that we got. And, uh, I mean, I look at from a defensive side, you know, you see Cade's his stats for the season. You know, I'm looking at that interception, you know, with three. Um, and also just that, that completion, you know, incomplete to completion ratio there where um, you can tell like that offense is that offense is a pro style where it's it's really heavily involved with run. And uh, for for him, um, it's going to be for for us to see. We know what he can do, uh, but we also need to be, be able to utilize those stats. So that's motivation for us knowing that, you know, it's going to be our DBs and our, our back seven 
uh, you know, they need to be able to go ahead and get get busy on the tackling because uh, we make them throw. They only got a few options in the, in the deep, deep, deep routes there. So, K. McNamara, um, we gotta we gotta go ahead and hit them and, and hit them all the time. Every chance we get, we gotta put some tap tap touch on them, right? We gotta put them touch where we wear them down, and we gotta make him think a little bit more than what he has to. So, um, I'm I'm looking forward to breaking this more down for for K. McNamara. Well, our question, Cade, is a guy that, you know, is known to be a solid quarterback, a game-managing type of quarterback. That's why Michigan decided to move on from him. He goes to Iowa to get a fresh start, but it seems, you know, Tigers don't change their stripes so far. And this is a guy who, you know, 51% completion percentage is not the best in the world. You know, four touchdowns, three interceptions, not, not great ratio-wise. You know, this is an opportunity, you know, as you just described, for Michigan State defensively to, to get at it, to get on him. Um, this is – he's coming off a game where he was not very successful against Penn State, as we're going to break down that in plays in a minute. But Cade McNamara's got it. Michigan State needs to capitalize on if he isn't having success early. If he is having success early, you got to hit him. You got to hit him just Absolutely. like every other quarterback. It's legal. I know it doesn't – it sounds brutal, but that's the game of football – so I expect Mr. Skate to get after Cade McNamara. This is not a Michael Penix Jr. situation that we faced two weeks ago against Washington when you saw a guy who was going to be a probably a top 15, maybe a top 10 pick in the NFL draft the way that lefty was slinging it around. This is a different type of quarterback. Very, very winnable situation for the Spartans defensively. On the defensive side of the ball, we have Mr. Higgins. Jay Higgins on defense. Yeah. Look, Jay's a local. He's one of your, he's one of them guys uh, from the, your area, man. Um, Nat Town. Nat Town Nat stand Town, up. Rebuff, rebuff, rebuff Jesuit guy. Like, now nah, this guy was always this in high school, clearly. And then going to Iowa, he has fully uh, paved his way to be in that star linebacker for them. But, I mean, I don't, we, we're going to see these highlights. This man <laughs> – he can thump it. He can thump, and he's coming uh, every chance he can. And so, um, but that whole defense, man, when you see it, they're flying around, and it's a it's a it's a team tackling mindset for them. So for us, you know, we're gonna have to be able to block and, and get down to that next level, which I know you're gonna break down from an offensive standpoint. But we got to be able to block not just these front these front defense linemen. We got to get to these linebackers, and we got to get to this secondary every level so that we can be able to create some windows for Nathan Carter. So uh, this is going to be a battle, man. Like you almost can tell, like they just love to be in inside run drills. You almost think that Iowa does inside run the entire time in practice. Uh, so, that's all they do. They ain't that's no all they do. Seven. Ain't no individual, just, just straight up inside <laughs> run. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Oklahoma drills. <laughs> for yeah. those that know. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the style of football that they play. Hard nose downhill. Uh, I mean, I don't recall ever seeing uh, Iowa not having a great linebacker. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I mean, their defenses have always been just stout, strong defenses. And, you know, it's a game that you got to bring your lunch pail for, man. This is one of those games offensively when you're a lineman. I don't care if you're running back, receiver, you know, you got to buckle up them chin straps, make it a little tighter, and get ready for a 12 round heavyweight fight. And that's what it's going to be. But this is a game. I, when we break this film down here in a moment, Otis, that you're going to see moments and places that are opportunistic for Michigan State to be able to capitalize on, much like a week ago against Maryland. So without further ado, let's get into the film breakdown right now. Otis, you know, you're going to break down some of the Iowa versus Penn State film on defense. So this is from the perspective of Michigan State being on defense, looking at the Iowa offense. Absolutely, man. If you look at this first play, man, um, you know, their, their tight ends are very, very heavily involved um, in their offense. And so, one, we always kind of talk about you can't get lured to sleep. You got to know your keys. You got to you know, stay sound. You got to do your job because there's elements of uh, these tight ends block, block, block. But they also will lure you to sleep and they can they can get out in space and be very productive. Um, I consider the kind of, you know, Iowa tight ends to to truly be like possession receivers uh, and not say that they're last saving grace, but they are they they block so much, too, that, you know, when they do come out, they f almost be like they're scot free. 
they're running in space. And uh, when you see this play right here, um, you know, you can you can play it where, this, you know, this is an element of you see this where, you know, you got the tight end that's kind of new on a slot receiver standpoint, and it's really 10, 15 uh, yard passes here. So, um, you know, you got to look at it where um, – Coach D, when he came over, he taught me something real smooth and real easy where I know these our, our D-backs can can attest to it. I'm hoping they are getting this same uh, teaching, which I know for a fact they are, is that you can always tell what the play is by the big elephants on the line, right? And <laughs> straight, you know, you quick stand up immediately, immediately on the snap, it's passed, man. There's no way they're going to be backing up and uh, it's going to be a run. Uh, but we talk about, Sluggo, we talk about elephant trunks to butts. That's downhill. It's run. Or you got to be sound because it could be a, a run, but it could be a boot. Where So it's an element where you got to stay sound because they're going to try to go pound, 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 run, run, run. And they're going to get lured to sleep where you're going to be kind of creeping up and got to come up. And then all of a sudden it's going to be a pass where you got to stay sound to your keys from tackle to guard. This is from a safety mindset perspective. But communication is truly key. Uh, if you look at that in other the, the next no next clip, notice when you no. for one second you talked about keys on the offensive line as a safety, and I know what linebackers typically look at on the defensive side of the ball. What mm -hmm. are you keying? Are you keying the guards? I know that's usually the guard triangle that linebackers are looking at, but in the safety position, you said tackle to tackle. What are you looking yeah, I'm at? Going to tackle. Yeah, I'm looking at tackle to guard. Like I'm looking at that tackle truly tells me that as soon as he Stands up, starts kick slide kicking. Obviously, he's protecting for the pass. He's trying to get that 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 edge of that that uh, quarterback's circle pocket, right? Pass rush. Now, you can also look at sometimes when you're doing key, you know key tendencies and you're watching film. You know, you kind of try to find out what a, what a quick like twitch or cheat from an alignment standpoint. Like mm -hmm. sometimes where sometimes guards will kind of like you know small head movements, man. Where like soon as they do like a head movement. You know when the ball's about to snap. Like you gotta look so like so detail oriented on how can I get the edge if I find one of these cheat sheets or these quick tendencies that I'm I'm able to play faster. Uh, but so it's tackle guard, but then it's quarterback. So when you know it's pass, you then you got a key. Or okay, who's my other receiver if I'm if it's trips or if it's tight end? You know you gotta look at that too because yeah you might see pass, but so it's pass. Well I need to figure out if I'm in zone or if I'm in man. Or if I'm covered too, so all those things are going in your mind in those split seconds. And so, but if you study to show that self approve, you'll know those things when you get out there on, on the field. So those things happen. It's like, oh, I've been practicing. I've been seeing this this in route all practice all week long. So as soon as I see it, I should be there to get a pass breakup or it should be an interception. That's been my mindset, obviously from a defensive side. Mm. Good stuff. I mean, again, master's class. So let's let's go to that next clip because this go. is where like we talk about tendencies, right? We talk about you know we got the now look we got here where here's where I'm looking at. So as a strong safety, obviously starting out, I was a free safety, so I was on that 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 field side. But as a strong safety on the backside, short boundary, this is a shorter to the field. You got two tight ends, you got three tight ends. So we looking at personnel. We should be saying it's three tights, three tight ends. You know, you should be looking at subs coming in like, oh, this is the three tight end package. Mainly percentage wise, heavy run. But you look at these tendencies where all linemen are blocking down, but then you see that tight end kind of lead blocking, trying to get to the opposite side. That should be an automatic tendency key of like, we need to replace. Like this outside guy right here, the corner, and this linebacker, this close edge here is like replace. As soon as he comes down that line, you need to go and replace that to close that hole because running backs looking at, hey, as soon as you snap this ball, go ahead and play it. Boom. So clearly you have one receiver option, but where's the outside help on that backside? Clearly somebody oh, really died, right? Clearly look at this. Look at this linebacker here from Penn State. <laughs> 30, Eyes are not locked 33. in, right? 33. Eyes were, yep, or 23. 23. Eyes are locked in because if he would stayed home, that's an easy QB sack or a tackle for loss. But instead, he's trying to go make that play on the backside when you've got other guys over there to set that edge, right? So that's for us as a defensive side is do your job. Hey, I know the play. I know the tendencies. I need to be able to set my edge and be ready for anything that's coming back on that boot. 
because you saw that tight end was going to come if you would have handed that ball off. That tight end, if you didn't get hit, that was going to be a tight end flat route if you think about it. So if you can play that again, if yes, the defensive perfect. line, yeah, if the defensive lineman get that pressure and just hit anything moving, that eliminates one of the receivers. Clearly, this <laughs> you see that tight end, eighty three, right? Gets hit right here, boom, okay. stops it. So he has no flat route option. He only has one deep route. Clearly, K. McNamara has to use his his feet. But this is what we don't want to do. Like we want to bottle this up and get tackles for loss, but we can't allow K. McNamara to beat us with his feet. And he's not as fast no. of a guy, not as, a, as as the greatest athlete, but we can't allow that to happen. And that's where how we're going to win these win this game by eliminating those plays. Mm. So then I got one more for you. I feel like I'm getting my two on here. I got one more. At least I got three. So now we talk about that I formation. Remember, I talk about can we can we establish the I formation back on Michigan State's <laughs> office? Bring that fullback back here. Um, so you're looking at this element standpoint of hey, I formation. All right, we already know too. Like Tennessee's, if we're watching, you know, it's gonna be heavy run here, but. Now I'm looking at this 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 fullback where mano y mano, right? We all know that he's going to either come down, just fake the block, or it can be a short short uh, run, or it could be a pass run. But looking at it when you snap this ball, look at all these these uh, linemen just showing you where the ball is going to go. Mm, yeah. Boom. You have the center pulling at this point too, right? So as soon as that center pulls, pulls, we got a power pull. As soon as that center pulls. Rewind it a little bit here. Rewind Let's it a little back. bit, yep. Because it's so quick. It happens so fast. I, I had to look at it a couple of times. I felt like I was getting my coach D on rewind, fast forward, rewind. As soon as he snaps his ball, boom, you see him pop over there to the pool to hit that outside edge. And that that linebacker or that fullback's trying to lead here. Replace, replace the gap, replace the gap, bottle that up, close it up. So it's a little block in the back, in my opinion. But close the gap, hold firm. And just everybody rally, rally through. So this is the element of we're going to see the exact same thing. It's going to be pace. It's going to be how much time of possession, how much time can we lure you to sleep, how much time we can beat you down and, and run, 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 have a pass that's not going to be over no 25, 30-yard passes. It's going to be your 10 to 15 to get first downs, possessions, possessions. Can we get three and outs? We get three and outs. We win that, that, that margin. It's going to be a, a win for the Michigan State Spartans. Love it. Hey, I love that breakdown, man. I'm going to get you some, you know, some kudos <laughs> on that one. We Everybody's like that. I, I think I've seen some comments about you being the next defensive coordinator, by the oh, way. Oh, nah, man. Hey, <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we could pull up, what I want to do is break down, since Chu is on hiatus and he's mad and, and complaining because we got to get our followers up and subscribers up, and we got to get you guys to watch some of those lines in a minute. Let's go to a play right here. We can pull it up right now, Tony, uh, where we have 11 personnel here. So this is, you know, we're looking at it from Michigan State's being Penn State right here against a 4-2-5 defense. So if you heard that before, I know people don't like talking about the 4-2-5, but this is what is being run around the country right now. So you have 4-2-5, it's first and 10, and let's run this play. You got one tight end, you got one running back. Play action. Easy little pass, almost an extended handoff to the tight end. Now you Just, see how, yeah, you see how Jay look. Jay Higgins is going to find his way in every every frame that yep, we talked about, right? right there. Yeah, missed the top, but he's going to find himself. But like yeah. straight, you see that you see that safety coming down, you know, creeping down. Clearly, uh, they were number watching. One. Yeah, no, you see, no, on the uh, backside, free safety coming down. Let's go back real quick. Let's see that one more time. Boom. He's, so you he's get a hat on the hat here. It's easy. This, 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 there's not a lot you got to do in a situation like this. This is just one-on-one, -on -one, you know, tight end in the flat, picking it up. Look at the blocking by the, the, the tight ends and the, the receivers downfield. You know, we talk about that a lot. Courtney Hawkins preaches that no block, no rock. That's where the receivers will be able to dig people out in the secondary, in the open field. That's so important to be able to get Extra yardage right there. It's a little, 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 little route there in the zone. Let's go to the next play here for a short yardage, if we can show this. So here is second and two. And you've got a 4-3 defense right now. Four down linemen, three linebackers. Just very 
bland, basic defensive look here. Uh, Michigan, uh, well, Penn State, uh, they've got 11 personnel. they got one tight end. It's a bunch formation. Let's see this play here, almost in a little offset pistol, play action. They're going finding a tight end just in a little arrow route. If we rewind this a bit here. Look at this route that the, the tight end, he, he just runs it from, he split out, and there's a zone. Otis, I don't know what, why do they run the zone all the time? But let me well, tell yeah. you, you can eat yeah. this up. Get right behind the linebackers, sit in front of the safeties, easy pitch and catch. Absolutely. But, look, we talk about reroute, reroute, reroute. Like, as a safety, this tight end is running for re. Like, there was no slowing down, no chip. No hit in the in the chest to slow it down, it's, you know, because the timing of the quarterback quickly snaps the ball and just looks right there because it was a free man running, right? But then you can see some miscommunication on the air. So on the offensive side is if we do our rush and hurry offense and we see these inconsistencies of communication, all right, we need to be able to capitalize on it. From last week, we know our receivers didn't play their best. Like there was a lot of, a lot of drop passes. Now, can we take this? Learn, learn these lessons from last week and then come into this week knowing that, hey, if we keep this going fast tempo, you're going to have some miscommunication where we can capitalize on it. And you kind of see what Penn State did was, you know, they kind of rush, rush, rush. And you see these open plays that we should be able to get to your point. You know, Donald Person, my guy from Flinttown, baby, is like Malik Carr should be a huge, oh. huge weapon for us. And we yeah. got to utilize him. We got to utilize him more. Um, because he's catching the ball, he's getting big plays, but we got to use him in boxing out. These tight ends just get to the just get to the stick straight, turn around, box out, throw the ball to him, first down. Let's keep going. That's the that's the motto. First downs all day. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. We got another play here. Let's br yep. bring it back up. Come on, let's go. Next play. We got to get everybody. Okay, this is this is short yardage right here, where it's mano y mano. Now we talk about a typical Iowa defense being able to bring that thunder. We always talk in these situations, who wins? Low man wins. So the lowest of the lowest wins when you want to reestablish the line of scrimmage. The blue line is the line of scrimmage. Obviously, the orange is the first down. Fourth and one here. Penn State snaps the ball. You see the tight end behind the quarterback here on the sneak. You guys seen this before. Yeah, absolutely. You've seen You've seen this. Evan Morris, the tight end for Michigan State, does this a lot with Noah Kim as a quarterback, whomever as a quarterback yeah. back there. But look at that surge. You know, you got like this is Iowa, look, was not ready for this particular play right here. It's a lot of guys catching. They're high. There's opportunity right there, Otis, as a defensive player. When you're playing safety and you see all your defensive linemen coming back into your lap, how do you make a play? Yeah. And I hope. They're not watching this. Like, you got Iowa fans, you know, Iowa people watching. But I hope they're not watching because if I'm looking at this, if we got fourth and one, we're going to do the same thing, but we need to do a little boot action, like play action. Because, like, those – there's some wide open, <laughs> wide open receivers on these element where it's a quick out route, just quick, hey, wide receiver uh, screen routes, let's get the ball out quick and let's get to the first down. But there's some big plays here from standpoint. There was a lot of those fourth and one – uh, QB sneaks in that game. Uh, so for us, let's if we get in those situations, oh, let's put some let's put some play action in there so we can get some big plays. Yep. Oh, baby, that or play no, action. it's time to use them fit some them feet, baby. It's time to use them feet. Let's go play action. Just so everyone knows where we are, we're on the same page here. That's when you fake the handoff, you pull it, and so the, the running back. Is coming in like I mean, and it brings all the defensive players in because they're feeling like, okay, it's short yardage. You only got one yard to get a first down. You're handing the damn ball off. So here we come, and the quarterback goes nope, and throws it over your head, and you cannot react in time. Deadly, deadly game, deadly Absolutely. play in Damn. those scenarios right there. Let's go to the next play right here because I know everybody wants to watch a little Thursday night football. So do we. All right, here we are. This is red zone right here. Red zone defense, you got a 4-3 once again. 4-3 defense, the two guards are covered. You got two tight ends in the ball game. One is motion. This is a bunch formation right here. Bunch formation. They're squeezing that whole defense inside near the hashes right here. Fourth and one in the red zone. Let's run this play. Pistol. 
That means the running back's behind the quarterback. Play action again. Man, just a little drag route. Just a little drag crossing route right here. See, see the, the shallow crosses, Otis? Yeah. Yeah, get those linebackers all caught up, and they don't know what to do. See, see, so you have, uh, you know, number one, yeah, he's just no running. Communication, no communication there yeah. on those safety side. But, like, linebackers, too, they're all they're all running up. Like, we got to sell that 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 read. We got to sell it, and we got to protect and get Noah time so these these plays can develop on our side. So uh, I see here those elements of Montori getting open, Trey getting open. You got Malik being able to get open on these. Let these plays and these things develop. Give him time so he can make those throws like Penn State did. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing the stats show that Iowa's pass defense is fifth in the Big Ten, 24th in the nation, only giving up 180 yards through the air. But when you break this tape down, there are a lot of places and areas open. And I, look, Penn State has a good team. I get it. But are we seeing superhuman ability out there right now in those places you just seen Penn State make against Iowa? No, man. And I feel like that's what I'm saying. Go back to just the foundation of football. It's like it's not rocket science. Let's get back to the, the origin of, hey, we got to tackle. We got to be able to do play sound football. We're playing it away. Sorry, I got got them cleaning the office right now. So if you can hear that background, I'm about to go close. Can't hear. You can't hear? Okay, cool. So playing sound football, we can't make self-inflicting wounds and mistakes. Saw last week, we was trying to get some momentum, and then we beat ourselves. This is going to an atmosphere that control the controllables. Let's be able to play sound football. And no, it's from start to finish. It ain't over till it's over. And I think that's the element. This is going to be a four-quarter game, or it can be complete opposite if we do not compete and keep hitting these guys because what they're trying to do is break our will, and they already know we're kind of down, emotional and mentally. So they're trying to break our will, and what we got to do is just rise up. And that's an element of mentality, compete, compete, compete. Yeah, and, and look, they're not, we're not the only ones down. They got smoked. I mean, this is a team – that got blanked a week ago by this team. Let's we got a couple more plays. We ain't done yet. Let's bring up another play here. 31 to nothing. And this is this is the offense here that everybody's been talking about, kind of leading the Big Ten in the way they do things at Penn State. Here again, you have a four three defense. Very big. Actually, actually, this is a 30 defense. A three four. Yeah, I see defense. a three up. I see three yeah, line. Three, but three you got one standing line. up, right? You got one yeah. standing up hybrid. Yeah. Yeah, a little 33, a little walkout over here. So now this is, what is this, second and six with a little uh, offset running back to the left and a shotgun. Let's see the, with one tight end in the ball game. Tight end, veers left, and it's a handoff. Now look at this running back. They, they, now they, they're special now. Oh, yeah. Ain't this, ain't this one of my ING kids you talk about, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about them another day. But look, this is what we could do. Nathan Carter. Can be Absolutely. This division number five right here. This isn't a hard block. Look at the, the tight end, the, the tackle block out there on the edge. Boom. You see that? See the right tackle? Yep. And the tight end, the tight end on the right side. Boom. Tight end, the tackle. Open up that hole. Thing. Yep. Open up That's that hole. That's what you're looking for. The right yep. tackle, the tight end. Wash out that right side of the offense, that de defensive line. And the running back's able to cut and get north and south. You know, not that stretch play that we saw on fourth and goal a week ago against I, uh, Maryland. This is more of a direct. It's more right at that that C gap more so than way outside where the, the running back is able to plant and get north and south and get big yardage against this team. You know, traditionally they're, they're just a tough team to play against but as you can see right here there's definitely plays to be had against the Iowa Hawkeye defense. Yeah, we got one more. That last frame, though, on that last Go play. Back. Bring it back up. Yeah, Bring you, it back up. You look at that last frame. Look at the over pursuit. That's what you talk about. Stick your foot in the ground. Get up. Get up yeah. the field. Because look at these three guys are overrunning it, right? So, in my opinion, like you said, our offense needs to be able to capitalize on these things where, like, we're not going east, west on this sideline to sideline. Sideline, stick and move. Let's go up upfield. Let's get positive yards. And this is an element where this defense is secondary. They're over. I mean, you kind of see number one here 
on a couple of those plays that you've, you've shown, Stray, is not saying he's the weak link, but he's not coming up being sound on the tackle standpoint. So let's go at him. Let's go at him. Let's get to that next, that third level and say, hey, we got to we got to see if he can make a play and be the last line defense as a safety spot, number one. Yeah, shoulders not square right there. He's turned sideways. Hard to tackle somebody that cuts back when your shoulders are completely turned to the sideline. The running back puts his foot down, and, you know, they're going to come at you with them pad levels low. It's hard to make the tackle. It's something that I can see Nate Carter doing all day long. Who met, and we're, we're hoping. We're hoping that we can get some more running backs healthy uh, this week against the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think we have one more play here that we can talk about. Goal line formation. All right. So this is, I think, we have, what, three tight ends in the ball game? That's uh, what I'm saying. Two you tight ends. Personnel, three personnel. Yeah. Under center, three backs in the back. This is old school football. This is, you know, uh, the Army, you know, uh, what's it, Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside, way back in 1902. All right. This is the same <laughs> kind of football. Goal line formation. All right. Run this play. Third and goal. It's all hat on hat. What do they do, Otis? Play Boom. action. Look at that. 44. See that? 44. Did they, did, they, did they run the sweep? Did they run the tall sweep? Huh? Did they run a the tall sweep here? No. No. A little drag route. Let's rewind that. Number 44. What did he start doing? He's on the end. He's the end man on the line on the right side. He blocks. Blocks. No, but, okay. no not even. He, I'm just, open. That's what I'm saying, See man. That? Look, did he get touched? No. Look at it. Boom. Oh, nope. no. Look at that. Look at everybody. He, number what's, 10 what's lost that? him. Like, oh, no. No. Hey, look at, look. What is, what is, what is he doing? I'm looking. What, what is he doing? Look, he run right past them. You see this? Like that means these linebackers, they're man to man. No one's passing nobody over. So this is pure chaos, but we got to capitalize on it. Like you see this, when you get in these situations, Coach Johnson, you got to make this call. You got to oh make this God. call. Oh my God, please. You got it's it. there. You got it. It's there every time. You know, folks, you know how it is. We there, yeah. we watching the game. We're like, please call that play because it's hard to defend down there. Look how, much, look how much time! Look, look how much time they give him. Look how much time he's. There's nobody near the quarterback. And, and no look at person. the quarterback's launching point. Absolutely. Look how far this is. Max protect. Everybody's in there blocking. Nobody. It, it, it was clearly going to 44 the whole time. He's back deep. There ain't nobody gonna sack him. If 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 there's pressure, throw it into the cheap seats. And by that we mean way up there by the hospital, Children's Hospital. <laughs> throw it up there really? to the kids. Give them a souvenir. <laughs> That's what you do, Noah, or, or or Kaden, whoever it is. Throw it up there to the kids. Let them have a souvenir. Don't take no sacks down there, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't take any sacks. Look, look, Otis, I think that I'm encouraged. The more we broke down the film, studying Iowa defensively and offensively the way you did, I think the Spartans have a chance. Hey, listen, we always have a chance. Now, it's all about, like you said, we on that sideline, like I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna lie. If I get on that sideline, I'm about to go on there inside there. Like the sideline need to be up and going. Like you got to be up. Like you might not be getting it. Cheer on the squad. We got to be bringing our own noise. If you're if you're going to the game, you know we may be far far few between many Spartans going, but we got to be able to compete in the stands, but also on that field. So to your point, I I'm always encouraged. It's all about sustaining that once we start kickoff and, you know, we don't let them get ahead and we also just maintain what we maintain. So I'm excited, man. Great breakdown. Well, it's a great breakdown by you. Look, I mean, look, the line, I don't understand these people in Vegas if you're into that type of thing, but I think the line opened up at eight or something, seven, and it's now at 12 and a half point favorite for Iowa and the over under is a is a number that is crazy 36 and a half points for the over under they're saying that this is going to be a low scoring game that we're going to get blown out in 12 12 and a half points if the total is 36 and a half points that means i mean touchdowns will be at a premium this is what it is this is two teams no you know i was not really a big play team if there is a big play team on this field on saturday it's, it's michigan state it's you be know that. we got the playmakers We've seen it. We've seen it against other teams. Central Michigan, you guys seen that? Remember the morning? All Richmond. I know that's lesser talented teams, but it's the same thing. 
man. Uh, it's not that difficult to go out here and execute because you know you can do it. And we've seen Absolutely. them do it against the ones uh, against each other. Why not do it in Iowa City? Yeah, look, I'm going to sneak, sneak around and put some pads on. Uh, listen. Yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and not get kicked out like I was about to get kicked out that basketball game. So I'm, I'm, I'm be composed. I'm be composed. Man. I'm be composed, but I'm gonna be out here talking some, talking some stuff to get our guys up and going. So I think we yeah. got our guys ready, man. Mentally, they know they know it's a business trip, man. You gotta yeah. be able to turn this tide, man. You know, everyone's counting us out. This is where we are able to rally internally. We know what we got. You got to go out here and put it on, put it on body of work on, on TV. Prime time, what is it? NBC, seven yeah. thirty p.m., six thirty central, seven thirty Eastern. Man, can't wait. Can't wait for it either, Otis. I mean, look, we getting on that plane tomorrow with the team. We're gonna be, uh, we're gonna give you guys live views on our social media, some some live action to see what it looks like to be on the road for the first time in this twenty twenty three season, and the behind the scene footage as we all travel over to Iowa City to face the Hawkeyes on Saturday evening. Do not forget to vote for your boy Otis as he's Man, doing I need, hey, five dollars. One vote is five dollars. I, I need to get it all the way up. I just saw Kyle put 20, 1999 uh payment in there, but I need y'all to scan that, hit that vote. You can do up to a hundred dollars per transaction, but five dollars to donate for a great cause carefree medical uh but i i had practice today i got the routine down i got that lift up we it's about to be good man i'm sort of i'm I ain't gonna lie i'm tired i'm tired boy but <laughs> after two minutes and five seconds then it's a you high the you got the lift got, got <laughs> the dirty dancing boy that that old you get them up yeah I'm okay, a man. <laughs> okay. Hey, man. Hey, so. we're gonna have to be there cheering on cheering you on that's Friday, October 6th, down in downtown Lansing at the Crown Plaza Hotel. I will have a link for everyone once probably next Monday so you can watch it, stream it, watch it. Uh, I did learn we're the last act to go on. Uh, so we gotta oh. wait. So I gotta wait to be like the grand finale, or like I can see the competition. It's like just don't mess up, man. Just get it right, get it tight, man. <laughs> don't mess up. And I know you won't, bro. This that's your element, man. That's cold as like you know. You know I like dancing. I, I like I, I can dance now. Yeah, hey, Nathan, Nathan do the stinky leg. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So everybody want to go check out those lines? I mean, we'll let you go do that right now. Don't forget to go to our link in the bio to get some merch because Michigan tickets may be on the line for some of that stuff in a minute. So be sure to go to all of our socials, any of those platforms, and get to that website to buy some merch for this is part of MSU. That's going to put a bow on it. Choo-choo. Hey, man. We want them back. Get us some subscribers. Everybody tell somebody. You know, it can't just be Steve Smith out and here. Let's, let's be real with it. He, his flight got delayed, and he's still in the airport. He should be in the air right now. So don't don't everybody get upset. He, he did put out that challenge, but he's also traveling back to get here in time to be ready for the team playing tomorrow. So we miss you, too. <laughs> miss you, too. Man, don't let them off the hook. We need them subs. <laughs> we do Otis, need them. We need them subscribers. For sure, for sure. We love it. Hey, for Otis Wiley, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is part of MSU. Have a good night. God bless you. Go green. Go white. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host, Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support, and as always, go green.